Um, thank you. In, in 1962, in a remote village in Scotland, a team of American scientists discovered 16 people who all had the ability to fly. Actually, that's not true, but it just seemed like a really cool way to start a talk. <laughs> and, uh, and even though that beginning is sort of illegit, unlegit, non-jitty, well, it doesn't really matter because revision has given us all the power to revise. So I'd like to begin again. I was born the son of a father who sold fish and chips at a fast food restaurant. My mother was kind, but due to an illness, she spent a lot of time sleeping. My older brother was very tall, and my two sisters used to steal the nylon stockings off our neighbor's clothesline and put them over my head because they thought it improved my image. <laughs> yeah, not everything I've experienced in life has been wonderful, just like not everything we first write down is perfect. So as I begin, take note that it is not the beginning of the writing process I wish to talk about. It is a spot closer to the end. It is a spot where revision resides. As a human, I have spent my whole life in constant revision, always wanting to change things up, always wondering what if or how would it be, while others whisper imagination, and good for them, I'm a fan of imagination, but while they whisper imagination, I shout revise. You see, the writing process is just that. It is a process of vital steps that you must follow. And I have talked all over the planet about what I egotistically call the Obert Eight, eight very important steps of writing. And uh, while each step in the process, it might come up, while each step in the process is important, I believe that step number five is the most frustratingly magical, and step number five is to revise. Some might find the fifth step um, uh, dreadful, frightening, hateful, taxing, unloved and unliked. Many might find the fifth step abhorrible instead of ador adorable. In a, as a matter of fact, in a non-scientific and a non-existent poll, it was shown that 87% of the population thinks revision is the worst. Yeah, 87%. You can't argue non-science. And as negative as that is, as negative as that is, I'm here to testify of the power of revision. And if you feel a hated feelings for step number five, I hope you might consider revising those feelings because revision is understanding. It is long-suffering. It is inquisitive. It solves things. It is the detective of writing. It stands over the mangled paper laying on the desk and says, um, excuse me, just one more question. Revision is the good cop to our bad copy. Yeah. <laughs> why, do we, uh, why do we write? Uh, to tell a story, to express a point, to share an idea? Why do we revise? To tell the best story, to properly express, and to share the right idea. I think as authors, often we write down words for the benefit of us, but we revise for the benefit of others, because I believe, or I submit, that what truly makes our ideas worth sharing is revision. As a child, I used to imagine what it might be like to grow up and to become a writer. I thought maybe I'd write under a beautiful tree on warm days in a lovely field. Maybe I'd use one of those feather pens dipped in dark ink, and I would scribble out perfect stories on the first draft. But as a grown-up author, I rarely find myself in warm fields. Instead, I find myself in laboratories and dungeons, ripping out the guts of my writing and stitching together a proper creation. It's revise. So even I, on certain days, hate revision. I am human, and it needs to be loathed, but it is important and necessary. Good ideas can get lost or become hidden or never be discovered if they are buried under the laziness and misconception of a job well done, when in reality it's still a job just begun. Every author I admire, every script I find genius, every book that has ever changed my life, has been penned by an author who had the intelligence to realize that their ideas deserve to be properly revised. In fact, show me an author, show me an author who claims never to use revision, and I'll show you an author whose only genre is fiction. And on top of that, they're probably not that good. Yeah. You've written your idea down, fantastic. Now put it to work. Master the magic of revision. Stand like a wizard before your ideas. Remember that revision has the possibility to turn, turn your pens and pencils into wands. Don't be willing to add toad's breath and newt liver if that's what it takes. 
Take out the small mucks of mistakes or the pockets of confusion as you brew your craft. Cast a spell of correction and clarity. Revision can take a weak sentence, paragraph, or paper and turn it into something substantive. You spit out your idea, but why settle for spittle when you can huck something solid? <laughs> that doesn't really make sense, but uh, luckily there are other people who make much better more sense than I do. So to quote all of my favorite authors ever, well, I must say, my favorite quote is to revise. Yeah, the... Um, <laughs> So poignant, so moving. The, um, another quote that I like is by a man by the name of William Hickson. He was a man who lived and died and then left this behind. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Well, I might not have reached the elite status of dead, but I'm hoping to leave this behind. If at first you don't succeed, revise, revise again. Revision is multi-purpose. Ladle it on your talks and presentations. Put it on your stories and papers, your programming and invention. Let it swarm up around you and change what you've once written into something much more than it once was. Revision, let it change your writing into a movement and a feeling that will change and help other people revise their point of view. Is not revision what we all need? Aren't we as human beings always seeking to revise what we see and hear and feel? Life is revision. Doesn't the written word deserve its share? In the words of Rodney King's English teacher, can't we all just revise? <laughs> yeah. Revision will help your writing to be better, be complete, be great. That reminds me of a story that I'm going to pretend like I just remembered. When I'm... Um, when I was a kid, in our house, we had this large fireplace. It was a huge stone fireplace with a, a large opening and a heavy metal grate that you could close to shut it off. But we never shut that fireplace because we needed to keep it open, because we needed to keep a fire going all winter long. Well, one of the problems with having to keep a fire going all winter long is that you're going to need a lot of logs. So in the summer, we would have to stack and collect tons of wood. And we didn't stack it by the house, we stacked it down by the shed, big, huge, massive piles of logs, just to make sure we'd have enough wood so that when winter came, we could keep that fire going. Well, when winter did arrive, it was my and my brother's job to bring those logs in. And we hated that job. We hated that job because it was cold. We hated that job because we had to do it all the time. We hated that job because the logs were heavy. But the main reason we hated that job was because of the bees. You see, in the summer, no sooner had we stacked all those logs when thousands of bees would swarm in and begin to make hidden homes and hives all throughout those dark spots between the logs. And so when winter came and we had to bring those logs in, we never knew where the bees would be. And if we grabbed the wrong logs and disturbed some bees, bad things would happen. I remember one time pulling some logs and disturbing some bees. They chased after me. I slipped and broke my collarbone. Another time, my brother grabbed some of the wrong logs. He fell, chipped his front tooth, and was stung like five times. And another time, I'll never forget. Well, it was a cold, dark afternoon. And my mom and brothers and sisters were inside on the couch keeping warm in front of the fire, but they needed more logs, so they sent me out. So I walked down that path, got a huge armful of logs, put a giant log on top, and I carried them all back to my house. And when I got back to the house, I took that big log off the top, and I threw it onto the already burning fire. And instantly the flames came up, and it began to burn. And I set the rest of the logs down next to the fireplace, and I took off my gloves, and I was warming myself up in front of the fire while my mom and brothers and sisters were all sitting back on the couch. And while I was warming myself up, we started to hear the weirdest, most uncomfortable noise, like an angry monkey screaming. And it stopped, and then it began again, and now it was louder and more piercing, and we couldn't figure out where that sound was coming from, and then we realized it was coming from the fire, and there, coming out of a dark hole from that top log, was a trail of smoky bees. Their hive had been inside the log, and when I threw it onto the fire, it had awakened them all. And as they crawled out of that hole, they would catch on fire and fly out into our living room. So we had a living room filled with smoking, screaming, flaming bees. It was not hilarious. It was horrible. And my mom, 
And my mom and my brothers and my sisters were all screaming at me, close that grate, close that grate, because I could have slid that metal grate closed and stopped any more bees from coming out, but I couldn't do it. I froze, I choked, and my mom and my brothers and my sisters ran from the house screaming, and my dad came running into the room wondering what the heck was going on, and he quickly assessed the situation and closed that metal grate to stop any more bees from coming out, and then he stood there by me while the rest of those bees that had already gotten out fell to the floor in dead little smoky piles. <laughs> and still to this day, I have mixed feelings about bees. And, and maybe that story doesn't fit perfectly right here, but it did contain a bee grate, and that's what revision can help you do. <laughs> yes, bee grate. The, um, yeah. Sure, our lives are filled with frightening things like revision and bees. But if you remember, or if you choose to be wise, what I hope you take from this is don't be afraid to revise. If writing is a journey, and it is, revision is the part in the story where you meet up with the magical wizard. It might seem gruff and kind of frightening, but it holds a spell to release the magic of your words. So be wise, revise. Here, in conclusion, let me try this. Um, I was born the son of a noble fisherman. My mother I was under a spell equal to any great queen or princess. My older brother was a giant who towered over everybody, and my two wicked sisters, with the help of a stranger, used to help cast spells to change my appearance. Yeah, I like that better than what I started with. I mean, it's still not perfect, but thank goodness for revision. Yeah, and all of this revising only gets us closer to the most important step in the writing process, and that step, of course, is to finish. So on that note, I'm done. Thank you all very much.